The first question by Miriam is how to build soil carbon sink. Would you like to respond to that? Yeah, so the, the first way to build soil carbon sinks is just to not to lose the carbon you, al you already have in your soil, so disturbing it less and, and uh, adding uh, biomass to it in, in, in various form. So it, it's globally what we call here conservation agriculture, which is reduced tillage or no-till and uh, green cover of the soil. And, and then you can also add biomass on, on top of that uh, by agroforestry and, and more, more diverse uh, layers of uh, plants. Mm -hmm. so we then yeah. Thank you. Um, there's an interesting question. Um, you said that um, agriculture should be more resilient. And uh, Natasha is asking resilient to what? Should it be so, resilient to just climate change or to all other development issues? So the the the, the way uh, we're, we're gradually uh, coming to 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 understand the notion of, of resilience and to apply it to to climate change is rather taking resilience as a broad concept, which means resilience to any kind of risk. There are two mm -hmm. good reasons for that. The first one is that there are the, the risks which are directly climate risks, uh, floods, uh, drought, and, and heat waves. But lots of the other risks that we already experience now, pests, diseases, price volatility, etc., will be exas-changed or, exas or increased by climate change. So the idea is the better you address the various categories of risk now, the better you are prepared to other risks in the future, to changing risks. Um, for instance, having good veterinary services everywhere to address the diseases every place knows now will make them able to see any change, to monitor change, and to get prepared, for instance, to movements of uh, Rift Valley Fever or uh, West Nile, all these types of, of diseases which are linked uh, to um, insects which will move with, with climate change. Um, mm -hmm. Another other examples are, are having stocks. If you have stocks, you're prepared to any kind of risk or diversification of, of agriculture at farm level, at landscape level which are all ways to get prepared to any type of risk and especially uh, climate change related risks. But, and, and resilience has to be understood at the ecosystem level. Having more healthy ecosystems is a way to get resilient, but also at social and economic level. For instance, social protection is a very good way to protect smallholders against having to sell all what they have, their livestock, for instance, and being unable to recover uh, after a crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And um, there are um, two questions about business. Um, can you say something of the, on the role of uh, private business? And also, there's a question about inclusive business. So that that's um, a, a very interesting uh, question. The, the farmers will have to, to get prepared to climate change, to adapt to it. And, but very clearly, they, they need support uh, in order to be able uh, to adapt. For, for instance, um, with climate-induced ch changes, which is climate, but not only. It could be pest, diseases, etc. They will need seeds more adapted to the new conditions. These seeds can already exist in another country, or maybe you'll have to have adapted varieties. But anyway, they will have to be produced in sufficient quantities and distributed in, in sufficient quantities. And it is true for all other type of inputs. There is, of course, here an essential role to play for business 
uh, and at every type, uh, every scale of business. Here, when I mean business, I'm also thinking of the women, uh, which in local markets are selling seeds in, in many developing countries and playing this essential role. There is also, for instance, a, a role for business when you, we say that smallholders should diversify their productions in order to, to be able to cope with variability. It means that business has to be organized in order to collect, to buy, and to transform diverse products uh, in, in a local area. So the adaptation to climate change and, and climate smart agriculture in, in general, increasing productivity and, and adapting, uh, needs an inclusive integrated approach uh, between mm -hmm. the, the various actors of, of the food systems and the food chains from input providers uh, to output uh, transformers uh, around uh, farmers and especially smallholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for elaborate uh, response. Um, there are several interesting questions. Uh, unfortunately, we can of course not deal with all of them, but if you have an important question and it's not responded, then keep it for the D group as well. I thought there is a uh, question that uh, may be interesting to several, which is about how can we measure progress? Um, that's a, a, a very in interesting question, uh, yeah, because and very one broad, of the yeah, issues but important. We, we have here yeah. is that there are things which are more easy to um, measure than others. And so there is a risk to focalize on what we can easily measure. For, for instance, we have measures of efficiency. Yield is a good one. Uh, we also measure quite easily the emissions of greenhouse gases. It's much more, even if it's difficult in the agricultural sector, but it's much more difficult to evaluate and measure resilience. Uh, mm -hmm. So th there is now lots of work going on on how you assess vulnerability how you assess resilience, what's the good indicator of it. And, and this is all the more important because, as pointed out in one of the questions, the real issue is, is, is not, when you think about climate smart agriculture, is not, the tr not really the trade-offs between adaptation and mitigation. The real question is the trade-offs or risk of trade-offs between efficiency and resilience. Uh, and, and how you can produce more, but being sure that this increase is stable. And, and for that, we need to find the, the proper way to measure and, and assess it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a question which links to that is posed by Lucas and uh, Hadi says, I have the same question. Is uh, resilience and mitigation seem almost opposite terms? Um, do you think agricultural systems could meet two concepts at the same time? Or they should meet it at the same yeah, time? When, when, when you say re resilience and mitigation, do you mean adaptation and, mit and mitigation? Or Yeah. Anyway, adaptation is yeah, a part of resilience. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the problem is, we have no choice um, mm -hmm. because even if the emissions were going to be global emissions were to be gradually uh, decreased, right, reduced right now, there will still be the impact of, of climate change because of former emissions. So agriculture has to adapt to climate change uh, and, and, and then it's also has to contribute as much as possible to mitigation because uh, if we do not mitigate climate change at, at a certain stage, it, it is not even possible to adapt agriculture. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the IPCC report is pointing out that above plus four degrees, uh, we have absolutely no idea of the, the possibility or not to go on 
Ja. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander, for your presentation.